hello. Might seem a little, uh, a little sniffly. I'm getting over something. I don't think it's the coronavirus. I think it's just a cold. Um, <laughs> you know, you see on, on TV, they, I'm, I don't want to say they're hyping it up because I think it is serious, but you know, they're very dramatic about it. And then they tell you what the actual numbers are and probably 10 times as many people, if not more, have just a regular cold or a flu. So I guarantee you that that's what I have. I don't think I have coronavirus. And if I do, um, one of the 80%, that's not that badly affected. So <laughs> anyway, I think it's just a cold. But what I wanted to talk about is, you know, I've been out of my my job now for a couple of months. And I was thinking back to the dynamic between myself and my supervisor and how it was very similar to the dynamic I had in the past with another boss and also, you know, my mother. So I think one and how, how it felt was like being in court or being on a trial 24 seven. And one of my favorite videos by Ollie Matthews was how the narcissist puts you on trial for life. And that's, that's kind of how it is growing up with an arc parent. But when, even when you're dealing with a boss who hasn't known you your whole life, so they can't necessarily use things from your childhood against you, but they will use something from a month or even years before against you or bring it up in a conversation with sort of an underhanded dig. Um, and that's, or you feel like you're always damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like, they'll give you a crit, they'll criticize you for something, and then, then when you do the opposite, or you defend yourself, say, no, that's not, not what I was doing, I was doing this. And then they, they sort of change the narrative and find a different way to put you down. Where it's like, you can't do anything right, you're always, and you feel like you have to backtrack over everything you do and everything you say. Almost like you're being, you're in court or you're on a, in sort of a 24 seven trial. And I think that's one of the, a good way to, if you, if you're questioning whether someone's a narcissist or cluster B, that's a good way to kind of tell that, yeah, that's what you're dealing with. When you start to feel like you're on a con in a constant trial or in court where it doesn't seem to matter what you do, it's always wrong. Like, I, I was saying how my, you know, my last supervisor, my last job, there were a couple of minor mistakes I made early on with, like, putting devices together, but they weren't even real product. It was more like mock for an experiment. They weren't full assemblies. It was, like, parts. So for the purpose of what I was doing, it wasn't even that big a deal. And then, you know, after he snapped at me over it and threatened to fire me over, like, two mistakes... I never did it again. And then a month or two went by and he started bringing it up again and like dissing me over it. He's like, oh, and when you do this, you know, make sure you put them together right because I always have to say that, not like this and not like this. Meanwhile, he didn't even explain it the first time. And it was two months had passed and he's like, cause I always have to say that. It's like, how many months ago was that? Like, what the fuck are you even talking about? And then how he tried to accuse me of not taking initiative. Well, there, there were a couple of times where he accused me of not taking initiative. But it's because he was twisting the narrative to make it look like I wasn't taking initiative. Like the, uh, the email where I didn't have the file I needed to send. So I was asking him if someone else who had the file sent it. And then he snapped and he's like, well, we thought you were going to take care of it. Like... But I don't have the file. How could I take it? I mean, it's it's one thing if I asked him to give it to me and I sent it to them. Or if he sent it. But whether I did that or he sent it directly, like, does it really make that much of a difference? And then some people are like, oh, well, you should be taking ownership. It's like, okay, well, still, even if I didn't, it's one email. Like, I don't think you can make a big judgment based on that about my entire character and how I don't take responsibility because of one, because of one email that I... It, it's just... It's another thing they do too. They take something like like something that's relatively small and they blow it up and make huge generalizations from it. 
So that's another thing they do, like I was saying about twisting the narrative. And how, you know, he criticized me one time how I was organizing things in a new manufacturing area and we had to hang stuff on the wall. And I didn't know if there were pipes behind the wall or something, and I didn't want to, like, hammer into a pipe, so I wanted to wait to get together with one of the other engineers that had a stud finder and so we could see where things were. So in the meantime, I just put up post-it notes, uh, you know, to as like a general guideline. I may move it an inch or two either way. But then he lectured me on, on the phone. He's like, well, that's not really my idea of what you should be. Meanwhile, he never told me earlier what his idea was or what he specifically wanted. He's like, well, what I would have liked to see. And I said, well, I don't know yet specifically where they're going to be. This is like an interim step. And then he was like, well, you know, if you had done it... So, like, basically, he accused me of not taking initiative, and then I told him, no, that's not my intention. This is why I did it this way. And he's like, well, still, you know, if you, you wouldn't have to babysit him then if you had done it right. So, you see what I mean? It's like, he first accused me of throwing it over the wall or, like, not giving the other guy any direction. Then I was like... No, that's not, that's why I'm not done. I want to meet with him and go get more specific with the stud finder and whatever. And then, then he said, well, if I did it his way, I wouldn't have to meet with him anyway, where his initial accusation was me throwing it over the wall. Like, do you see how this doesn't make any sense? And how they, <laughs> the fact that like, just the, just the fact that I have to, there have been a lot of situations where I've had to replay conversations in my head or replay things I did and said. Once you find yourself doing that, I, I think you know you're dealing with a narcissist. When you feel like you're in court and you have to do all this mental gymnastics and replay everything you do. And also, like, when they accuse you of doing something or doing something wrong and you defend yourself or <laughs> even prove them wrong, like... No, that's why I did it, or no, that's not why I was doing. Then all of a sudden, they change why they were pissed at you. It's like, well, no, it's because of this, or still, you should still, and, and, but then it doesn't make sense based on what you just said. You, you know what, I, I know that probably, maybe that doesn't make any sense, I don't know, but this whole, like, how they flip the narrative on a dime when you prove them wrong, and they totally change their stance on why they were pissed at you. I, I I noticed that, like, without fail, every narc I've met has done this. Like, that, that f like, flip mid-conversation. And, you know, it's just this constant feeling of being on trial. No matter what you do, it doesn't matter. And ev every conversation is like some sort of a mind fuck. It's like, it's like, well, you still should have done this. It's like... No, but you just said five minutes ago the opposite, and you were pissed because of the opposite reason. And now you're telling me. And then, when they when they really have nothing else, they just throw the most random bullshit out there. Like, when I told him why I had the post notes up. Um, and he was like, well, still. There should be a liner in the trash can, and the mask should be in the mach the mask should be in the machine already. And the well, the stuff isn't even mounted to the wall, so the guys are gonna go in there, basically drill into walls, get dust everywhere, and the mask is supposed to be out. Like, does that eat? <sighs> you know, and the whole it was supposed to be a clean room, and this is what he's telling me, like. Just, just like the psycho, like, I think a lot of these people, they don't, they don't even think through what they're saying, or they have these outbursts, and they don't even think about what they're saying, or, like, if it even makes any sense, or, like, it's about telling you you're wrong or putting you down just for the sake of putting you down, and then you, you move away from it, and you look at what they really said, and it, they're, it's just, and it's just complete nonsense. And then you dealing with all on the other end, you feel like you're like pulling your hair out trying to defend yourself or like going over in your head why you're not wrong or was I wrong in doing that? Is it, 
is he really maybe I'm reading the situation wrong but no that's part of their their tactics they want you to feel that way so they can maintain control so I think that's one of the primary red flags where you're if you're not sure yet if you're really dealing with a narc or a toxic person it's do you feel like you're defending yourself constantly do you feel like you're in court and that it's a 24 7 trial and if the answer is yes then you're dealing with a cluster b and like i said one of ollie matthews one of his the his videos that's one of my favorites is um they put you on trial for life um for life or for however long you've known them because they will bring up a mistake you made or so, no matter how minor from months or even years back and you're sitting there like like really you have to bring that up to prove your point really so then if you have to do that then you don't have much of a point do you anyway <laughs> i guess that's the end of my rant again i think i have a cold i don't think i have coronavirus and um, I'll see you all soon if the world doesn't end, and I'll see you on the next video.